Hello, and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. Now today, I'm going to be looking at two different stories from Saskatchewan's history. I'm going to look at the hottest temperature ever recorded in Canada, which was recorded right here in Saskatchewan. And I'm going to be looking at Chief Piapot, a really interesting figure from the history of Saskatchewan. So let's just dive right in and learn all about these amazing stories, these amazing figures that come from Saskatchewan's history today on Canadian History X. The summer heat can be a tough thing to deal with in Saskatchewan. And on a certain day in 1937, that summer heat was the hottest ever seen in Canada. It was on July 5, 1937 in Yellowgrass, just south of Regina, when the temperature climbed above 30, then above 35, then above 40, and finally hit 45 degrees Celsius. It wasn't just yellow grass that suffered on that hot day. The temperature hit 45 degrees in nearby Middale as well. To put things in perspective of just how hot that was, the average temperature in July is 26.6 Celsius for yellow grass. Prior to this, the hottest temperature ever recorded in Canada was 43.9 in Rock Creek, British Columbia on July 29, 1934. For the residents alive during that time with no air conditioning, such a hot temperature was terrible to deal with. Bing Jaster was working in a garage during the hot day and he described it as such. It was awful hot. I got a pretty good sweat up. Fred Molly described the day as a time when you couldn't just go to the store to get ice cream to cool down and if you wanted ice cream you had to make it. Unfortunately there was no ice on hand to do such a thing on that day. Shirley Lund was 15 when the temperature hit that all-time high, but amazingly, she still went out and played baseball with her friends on a day hotter than any Canadian had ever seen, at least in terms of recorded temperatures. There was no shade in the field, so everyone would just go to the water pail to stay cool, and she would say, We all shared the dipper. We were so engrossed in this darn ball game, I don't know whether we won, lost, or tied. Grace McKee had moved to the area in July 1937 after the arrival with her family, and she got down to baking. That day she chose to bake was July 5th, 1937. The heat in the kitchen must have been much higher than that record temperature, and it's likely that her kitchen was the hottest place in Canada, ever. Hans Holskog described the day when the temperature was over 40 degrees in the shade as a day when a huge storm ballooned up at 4 p.m. and tore everything down in the farm, including blowing his barn to bits. The record held by Middale in Yellowgrass has come close to being broken before, including when the temperature hit 44.4 Celsius in Lillooet, B.C. on July 16th and 17th, 1941. When you drive down the Trans-Canada Highway from Maple Creek towards Swift Current, you will pass a community called Piapot. The name may seem odd, but it comes from one of the most important Cree leaders from the post-Confederation period, Chief Piapot. Born near the border of Saskatchewan and Manitoba around 1816, his name was originally Kisikawasan, or Flash in the Sky. As a young child, he was kidnapped with his grandmother by the Sioux, and would grow up with his captors, learning their medicine. When he was 14, he was captured by the Cree and returned to his people and given the name Piapawat, which means Hole in the Sioux, because of his knowledge of the Sioux. In 1860, he had become the spiritual leader of the Cree and was the chief of the Cree Assiniboine known as Young Dogs, a powerful band of Cree and Cree-speaking Assiniboine. Known for being great buffalo hunters and warriors, they depended on the declining buffalo herds, and Piapot was an advocate for expansion into the Cypress Hills. He then had a dream in which the invasion of the Cypress Hills would end in Cree defeat. Afterwards, he was unable to convince the other leaders, and as a result chose not to participate in the Battle of Belly River. The battle would go terribly for the Cree, who lost one-third of their warriors. This was the last completely indigenous battle on Canadian soil. In 1875, Piapot would meet William J. Christie, a treaty commissioner for Canada. Christie wanted Piapot to sign Treaty 4, which had been negotiated in 1874. Piapot did not want to sign the treaty until several changes could be made to it. He was told that the changes had been made 
when they had not, and he signed it on September 9, 1875. Until the day he died, he felt that Ottawa had betrayed him. He would spend the next ten years negotiating with the federal government, banding together with other chiefs to refuse to sign any additional treaties until the Canadian government granted the Cree their own unified territory. As time went on, it became clear that the federal government would not agree to this. As a result, Piapot, along with the other Cree leaders such as Coesis and Foremost Man and the Assiniboine, all requested reserves in the Cypress Hills and to have their territories adjacent to each other, and Ottawa agreed to this request. As with so much to do with the Indigenous, what actually happened was far from what the Indigenous hoped. In 1882, the declining bison herds had pushed Piapot's people into starvation, and Piapot and his young dogs agreed to leave the Cypress Hills in exchange for food and supplies. After getting their rations and supplies, they returned to the Cypress Hills, and the next year agreed to leave again, going to Indian Head amid an escort of the Northwest Mounted Police. Once Piapot reached Indian Head, he began organizing his people again with the hope of establishing a territory for them. He was able to get permission to establish a new reserve adjacent to another Cree reserve, and he would join with the other leaders who had signed Treaty 4 and Treaty 6 to pressure Ottawa to make changes to the treaty. It may have succeeded, but the 1885 Northwest Rebellion gave the government the excuse it needed to crack down on the Cree. A military fort was built next to the reserve of Piapot, and many leaders were arrested on charges of being rebels, whether true or not. Piapot was the only leader not to be arrested. Following the rebellion, Piapot continued to be a respected spiritual leader among his people, and continually advocated for the preservation of Cree culture, while distrusting the Canadian government. In 1902, William Morris Graham, the Indian agent for the area, attempted to have Piapot removed as chief, citing incompetence. He would succeed in having Piapot removed after Piapot held a thirst dance, a ceremony that was banned in 1892. On April 15, 1902, Piapot was removed as chief. Piapot then met with Governor General Lord Minto that September, and was able to persuade Minto to lift the ban on the thirst dance. But in the end, he was unsuccessful in convincing the Canadian government. Piapot would pass away in April of 1908. Until the day he died, despite the government removing him as chief, he was always seen as chief by the people of his band. I hope you enjoyed that look at Chief Piapot and A Very Hot Day in Yellowgrass. You can reach me at craig at canadaehx.com and I encourage you to visit my website where you'll find hundreds of articles on Canada's history. Just go to canadaehx.com.